Cash the Ticket, Records and Reactions, Jim Costa, Mike Valeni. Rate, review, subscribe. We got week two of college in the books. Week one of the NFL to recap. Mike, how you doing? I'm good. I'm, I'm, I have a lot of regret. Even though I did fine, I left wins on the board by letting line movement talk me out. I, 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 I allowed fandom to play a role. We're going to talk, but I feel like I did fine. I should have done so much better, and it's no one's fault but my own. We got to do a better job of helping each other because the one thing we did together, the unders, our salvation Project in the NFL. Operation Under was a rousing success. Rousing. I know we told you guys don't do it, but I hope you did. I hope you played with us. I really do. I do. I'm, I hope you guys bet them all with us. So here's what I want to do. I would like to, before we get into records and before we get into the picks, I want to do general sports talk, which is winners and losers, both ways, college and pro, and talk through this stuff. Then we'll get to some of the records, the the biggest bet regret. The nuts or, or, and bolts and all that stuff. I don't stuff. know what we're going to call that segment. The I fucked up or whatever it is. <laughs> let's stick with that. I like that. And then the cap of the week, and, and we'll get to it. But let's do winners and losers. And just organically, I want to go through, go winner, winner, loser, loser, and yeah. just see where your head is at. Do we agree? Do we not? Who's the biggest winner? Give me one of your winners of the weekend. Texas Longhorns football. Yes. Rolling on the road, not only win by the seven, but win by several sevens, <laughs> laying several touchdowns and getting it done anyway. Mike, their offensive line was at, as advertised. We talked about that group up front, veterans, 100 starts. Ewers, decisive, getting the ball out. This is Sark and Ewers, back-to-back -back years, going on the road and winning by double digits in, I would say, tough places to play, Tuscaloosa and Ann Arbor. This says Texas is for real, does it not? Yes, yeah, they, they proved everything that I, I, I had doubts on. Um, yeah. This is back-to-back -back where Ewers has played in a big game like yeah. this and showed up. Uh, running game was better than I expected. Uh, I was really surprised that Kenneth Grant and Mason Graham didn't control the line of scrimmage for U of M. They got bullied. They, they did, kind of. Now, Mason Graham had a really nice game, sure. statistically. But Kenneth the front. Grant was Kenneth Grant was nowhere. You realize Kenneth Grant through two weeks has one assisted tackle? I thought it was a, a master class for Sark because RPOs, you want to bring your blitz, swing pass. Oh, look at the vacated space. Oh, what happened? Now we're going to run yards after look, the Look, I think the bigger story, and, and I want to give Texas credit. I, I thought Michigan would run the football and, and, and be able to stay in the T.O.P. thing. If Texas is a winner, Michigan's a loser. Yes. Now, I, I don't know if I'm allowed to say that because of where I went to school. Dirty Spartan. But can someone... Explain to me how you ended up with Davis Warren winning a quarterback competition. Because here's who he should win against. Dead people. Davis Warren is bad. There's no, Jim, there's no other way to put it. Yeah, but you went to East Landfill, so you can't say that. All right, rate, review, subscribe. I'll talk to you guys later. <laughs> I just... No, it's honest. It is. Take me through well, it. And break this down. They decided, uh, with their infinite wisdom, that he is QB1. Right. So explain to me why you're taking QB1 out of the game on third and three, bringing in the running back slash quarterback and running the ball predictably, going nowhere. There's the part, predictably. Why you got to be predictable? Twice. If they had brought Orgy in and they go jump pass, Ooh. or let's say you run Trinket, like your boy Kotal Nicky, and we go a little pop mm. pass or something, you got to... Jim, I, I don't, I don't want to overreact I'm mad I didn't bet Texas. I let the line scare me because it moved out to time of taping over seven. And I'm like, I don't want to do that. I should have. I should have had the, the dignity to ride with you. Yeah. But you know, I had doubts about Texas. Those doubts no longer exist. Um, but no, the other thing with, with Michigan, it's really obvious that when you don't know the other team's play, you play slower. Okay, I got that out of my system. <laughs> Are we good? Can we be done? You, um, you had about 100 ticket texters today. Well done. I just, listen. <laughs> the joke I, writes itself. I get it. it. Does, I know, I know, but here's I the know. reality. Wink Martindale is nowhere near Mike McDonald or Jesse Minner. Yeah. Um, cheating aside, Wink is, is a dinosaur, uh, the OG of the scheme. Jim, what you're seeing is real offensive coordinators who aren't stubborn can expose Wink. And they can expose a, a pretty... If he has Alabama talent, he might be able to execute this. Jim, there were receivers running wide open. And the final score did not indicate how bad that game was. I mean, they could have scored by a couple more touchdowns. Uh, they could have won by more. Can I give you a winner? Yeah, please. I want to give you a big winner. I want to talk to you 
about Nebraska football. Oh. Do you know how good you have to play in order to lay down and do nothing in the second half and still win by basically, but you know, better part of three touchdowns? Yeah. I, I, I want to just, I love the control they played with. They didn't ask Rayola to do it all. They set them up. They knew they could run the football. Defense obviously got them a score. Rayola, just go out. Give me an 18 for 24. Balanced, be on time, on task, on target. I thought that was a nice job by Nebraska. Now, again, I don't think they're a playoff team. I don't think they're going to win the Big Ten. But we talked about it. This was a year Nebraska had to pop. Needed eight or nine wins. And I think that win and the way they played sets them up to do so. Agree or disagree? Agree. Year two, Matt Rule, we had highlighted it in the preseason episode. This was, stop us if you had heard this before, this is the year for Nebraska. But it was the same deal at Temple and Baylor. Year two for Matt Rule, six win improvements. Now, six wins would put Nebraska into a different stratosphere. Yeah, It's going to be a big step forward for them. I do wonder, though, as much as they're a winner, is it more that Colorado's a loser? Yes, Okay. You, both things can be true. Okay. And here's here's the deal. I don't need any more hype man bullshit. This is year two, and Dion once again refuses to go and recruit, refuses to be a real head coach. That offensive line is every bit as bad as last year's. True or false? True. Okay. Which seems in- inconceivable, you but true. You got bullied by North Dakota State up front. You got bullied by Nebraska up front. Oh, by the way, Shadur... Be a leader. You got all the post game to go get checked out. Two minutes to go. He do, it's st- stop. He doesn't leave that game if they're winning or if it's close. You see him post game throwing yeah. the O line under the bus again. You got to play another ten games, kid. What Dion Come is on. doing is absolutely toxic. You know what he's doing? He is like the the drummed up youth coach who's like only in it for their son to look good. Only he's not doing this at like a ten year old's baseball game. No, he's doing this at a major public university. And my my issue is for people they always want to create this narrative like well you don't like neon dion because dot 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 and it could be anything from uh you're old or you don't like people doing it different to you're an outright racist i mean the the, the narratives with no how about this i don't like bullshit dion is bullshit this is bullshit he is wasting a top five quarterback maybe the number one overall player in travis hunter he is wasting real talent because he will not subscribe to the job how to build this goddamn thing where's the development where's the commitment to defensive principles tackling fundamentals offensively pass blocking run blocking a commitment to the run game for balance even just for the sheer sake of not getting your quarterback killed colorado is on the radioactive list i want them to be the first submission that the only thing you can do with colorado is to bet against them or not bet at all you can no longer, I swear to you, if you line up this week and bet Colorado laying seven and a half at Colorado no, no, State. No, 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 We're not friends anymore. No, it's not happening. Okay. They're radioactive, but I want to attach another stick of radioactive dynamite to this. Huh. SMU. Okay, so you got to fill me in because I didn't watch no much problem. of this on what, Friday night. We were in Vegas. We watched. Okay. Rhett Lashley is running a clown show. <laughs> First of all, if there's an offensive line worse than Colorado, it's SMU. No slam. That doesn't even seem possible. Preston Stone has gone from a guy with 3,200 yards, 26 touchdowns, three interceptions, to a guy who moonlights with this backup, Jennings, to a guy who doesn't play now. There's no injury. No one knows what's going on. The team is undisciplined. They cannot pass protect. The offense has no verticality because the line cannot allow it. They got beat by a horseshit BYU team who only scored 18 points. This wasn't even the dignity of a 42-38 shootout. (laughs) Jim, 18 to 15, clown car. You cannot bet SMU. You can't touch them. Colorado, SMU, SMU, Colorado. What's this Spider-Man meme? Yeah. They are the same. One just has way better uniforms. I, I am warning you. If there's a moment where I talk about the Stone Age or get Stone, no, 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 fuck you. We can't touch this team. I'll take your word for it. All the hype, all the dark horse in the SEC, ACC, all the, the sex appeal. Watch these dudes. I've watched them twice now. I watched them against Nevada on opening night, and I went, hmm, that didn't look right. Then, two weeks later, BYU, home game, sellout crowd, and it was morbid. Loser. Colt McCoy. Quaaludes. Can you explain what happened on Saturday night? I'd someone get the guy an energy drink. So I looked up. It's like, oh, who is this guy? 
Like, because normally it's it's Blackledge, right? But I think was he doing the the NFL on the Friday night? I don't I, know. I don't. You know what? But, but I'm like, who is this this like half asleep human being up in the booth? And it's Colt McCoy. Was that the first game he'd ever done? Like, I, I mean, he, both him and Brady, fellas. I was going to ask you because slam I was, a Red Bull okay. and let's get after it a little bit. I was, shall doing, we? I was doing Lions pregame. I didn't hear Brady. I've read reviews. Can you break it down for me? Because I've heard his cadence was really slow. Very. He was like doing like press conference responses instead of just being a person. Well, and it was very cliche. It was all like, yeah, you know, he's going to really go out here and try to score some points today. I'm like, what? This is the $300 million color, an- color analyst? Yeah, and, and again, here's the thing. For people who want to go, oh, well, he needs time, then fucking learn like Troy Aikman did. Troy Aikman went to NFL Europe to learn how to broadcast games. I am just so sick and tired of handing ex-athlete job as if they have anything to say. Look, they might be knowledgeable, but it doesn't mean they're broadcasters. Right. And then there are broadcasters who are not knowledgeable. Mm. Your job as an ex-athlete, get enough of the broadcasting chops that we're willing to listen to you be knowledgeable. But when you get into cliche mode, I thought Brady was a C-plus at best. And it feels like, again, an opportunity. Colt McCoy, forget it. Yeah, well, okay. Let's Hi, see. everyone. My name is Colt. I'm like... <laughs> Where's the juice? It's like someone had stumbled into the, like the, the the booth. Can I can I give you can I give you a, a two for one loser? Yeah. Joel Klatt, Gus Johnson, professionalism. Oh, what's wrong, bitches? Your school's losing. There, they were despondent, calling Michigan and Texas in the second half. Despondent. Oh, what happened to Mister? Ha ha! The da touchdown, black guy. What what happened, Joel? What happened? What a couple of putzes. Well, and again, tell the story. The story is, and we hit it, Texas, arrival, yes. SEC, national title yes. contenders. Look at how Quinn Ewers. Plenty to be NFL. excited about, yeah, no? Of course. Hell, I don't care. Talk about how good McConaughey looks in a leather jacket. Do whatever did, you like. Did you see Sark's look when he showed up? Oh, yeah. Yes. Oh, he was sharp. Yes, but here's my point. This is, and, and I'll leave it here, because I don't, I don't want to go down this road. Yeah. But it is one of my major misgivings is how the conferences are directly dealing with the networks and the say the networks are getting. The fact that Big Noon is a Big Ten Michigan production. No, 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 no. It's number three versus number 10. Where's Keith Jackson? Where's Brent Musburger? Where's Ron Franklin? Where are the broadcasters who just called the fucking game? And if Team A is good, we're going to blow them. And if Team B is bad, we're going to kick them in the face. This is, that was a bullshit broadcast. That's all I had to get it off my chest. More winners and losers. We've done all college. Oh, and you're, you're laughing. I'm not done with the losers yet. There's losers everywhere. No, I'm saying, but are you done with college? No. More losers in college. I see dead people. Oh, no, we gotta go Dame. Late. Oh, yeah, yeah. Guys, we sat here and drew a warm battery after what you did against a and They did, first of all, cap of the century by me. Cap of the century by me. But how do you go out and lose to Northern Illinois? 16 to 14. Dude, Jim, you, I need your help. I couldn't believe what I was watching. I'm just so happy I stayed with you on the bet. That's all I could think I of. I asked you to support Thomas Hammock. I asked you to support Emotional the Emotional Thomas Hammock. Let me say this. Let me say this. I want to I be very direct with yeah. the camera here. I have shit on Thomas Hammock for years. I, I don't like him. And uh, I question whether he's got a brain inside that bulbous head of his. But um, I actually felt really good for Thomas Hammock. And I want to say, Thomas, you cry all you want. You deserve it. Former team captain at NIU, former running back. He cares deeply. You could tell. And the little guy right now is getting pushed out of college football. We're not going there. Don't yell at me and call me a boomer. I just felt good for, for him, that team that program, because they're getting left behind. And if that's their final farewell to relevance, good for you. Touchdown, Jesus. I, I, I loved it. I loved his post game, And um, that's all. I'm sorry. I still think your shit is a coach, but God bless. I'm happy for you. Now ranked in the top 25, NIU off that win. It's amazing, isn't it? You get rid of Rocky Lombardi and the good times happen. <sighs> what happens with Notre Dame now? Because I've seen people say they shouldn't make the playoff if they go 11 and 1. This loss should be disqualified. You right have here. your hand up. I'll tell you why. You think, hold on, if they go 11 and 1, they would have some marquee wins along the way, would they not? Nope. They'd beat USC on the road to do it. That doesn't count for anything. They, the one at Texas AM, that doesn't count for anything. You don't play in a conference <laughs> and you don't play a conference title game and you lost as 30 point 
favorites to a team that probably won't win six games. At home. Does that part matter? If yes. NIU wins like eight, nine games, is that... Does It'll that make ma- me feel better about okay. it. Sure. I don't think 11 and one, they're going to get left out. No, no, it's, you always do this. What you think should happen and what will are two different I don't different think things. you should leave out an 11 and okay. one team. Different conversation. Okay. I think that was a total joke. And and again... Oh, I, I don't, I'm not defending the performance, I but miss, the season is more than one performance. I miss the old college football where that loss decapitates their season. I don't think you deserve a second chance. Jim, again, if you have the dignity of losing 38-35, a couple of wild plays, say a ball bounces off a guy's face, touchdown, you lose 16-14, to it's what we capped. You didn't show up. You weren't ready to play. Oh, you were so spot on with this being a letdown spot off a big emotional win. But I I thought they were a big loser here, but you're right. They'll end up getting in because, well, fuck it. The network's. Seriously, it's Notre Dame. I think it's a different conversation if they're 10-2. and Ten and two, you're going to be compared to a lot of two and three lost teams. Would you Th- agree? This would be if one they of those. Drop that- another game, I have every right to keep them out. Yeah, I mean, can I got to. Can you do me that kind? Yeah, now I got to see who we're comparing them against, but this is going to be a disqualifier, probably. Okay. Right? I mean, most teams aren't going to have an NIU loss on the record. Okay. Okay. Now, NFL losers. Oh, can we start with your team? Yeah. Let me. I'll stay calm. But yesterday was supposed to be a special day. Okay. Yesterday it was 70 and sunny. And I surprised my father, the, the venerable Big G, a class individual. I surprised him because now you don't have to change your cable system to have NFL Sunday ticket. I surprised my dad with NFL Sunday ticket. I said, Pop, here you go, buddy. I know you care about these assholes. He was beside himself, overjoyed. I get to watch my team. I'm so, uh, Michael, thank you. This is incredible. I go, all right, Dad, I got you covered. So we set them up. We did the little QR code. I catered lunch. Got my dad some, his favorite Italian sandwich. Just, I'm like, you know, listen, I'll watch a little bit of the ball game with you. Let's sit. Let's see what happens. Hey, Dad, I'll tell you what. You want to play a parlay? I got you covered. Come on. We're going to have some fun. Had a little, little Diet Dr. Pepper, one of my favorite football beverages. Welcome to Fansville. And um, Daniel Jones... Basically, if you had a giant Godzilla-sized Daniel Jones, he popped a squat over my parents' home and shit forcibly, <laughs> violently. And not even a, a solid shit. We're talking like half a toilet paper roll worth of cleanup needed. We're talking a shit after you had some bad lettuce. And um, my dad was broken. My dad sat there, a man full of life, and unlike me, full of positivity, Slumped over in his chair. May as well have taken his pulse like a TV show. And he texted me hour. I, I, le- I left. I left in the third quarter. Uh, I said a few things that my mother was upset with me about. I, I'm still, I, you, you still can't curse around my mom. It's Italian mom syndrome. And, I, and I, Jim, I said it. After, after he threw that pick six, I go, you stupid motherfucker. And my mother's like, Michael. I'm like, mom, I've had enough of this shit. I go, they're ruining this guy's life. I, I, I want a refund. I said, Dad, I love you. I got to go. I can't do this. I, I'm, I'm going to watch Red Zone. I can't do this. I, it is one thing to be bad. It is another to be hopeless. The New York Giants go out here. I told you I didn't like Dayball or, or Shane during the uh, Hard Knocks thing. Yeah. I'm right. They're fucking clowns. This asshole's calling the plays now. You have Jalen Hyatt. Deep threat. Mm-hmm. Darius Slate, deep threat. Malik, neighbors, deep threat. How many balls over 20 yards did the Giants throw? Tell me. Zero. Oh. Daniel Jones is out there. Uh, khakis. He didn't know. Can't process. Can't move. We're calling quarterback power on third and four. Uh, a guy with a torn ACL. I, 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 mean, I mean it when I say it. My season is over after one week. My poor father texted me later in the day. Second quarter Lions game. He goes, Michael, I've been so upset all day. I didn't watch any football until turning on the Lions. I'm so disappointed. This is, listen, I need John Mara to sell the team. This is on John Mara. He is a spineless, weak, feckless, feeble old man. And he continually allows shysters and con men 
to run this once proud organization. Do you know yesterday, Jim, they celebrated their 100th anniversary. Legends were in the building. Even degenerate ones like Lawrence Taylor, they were there. Eli Manning was there. Phil Simms was there. Mark Bavaro came out dressed as Rambo. Everyone was there. You know what the New York Giants did? They took a shit on all of us. Fucking losers. Fuck them. I fucking hate them. I wish that stadium would sink into the goddamn swamp. Assholes. Ruined my father's fucking day. They, ru- they ruin my fall every fucking year. Dicks. Just, they decided to pay that blank-faced loser instead of Xavier McKinney and Saquon Barkley. Think that over. These two jerk-offs went through an off-season, and they didn't get a quarterback. I mean, you don't think Gardner Minshew would have looked better? You, uh, uh, tell no, me. no, I'm not going to fight you on Famous it. Jameis wouldn't look better? Jim, the guy can't process. Ready? Daniel Jones, reading NFL defense. Dexter Manley, reading Shakespeare. One problem. Dexter Manley's illiterate. And here's the thing. It's like the, the world's slowest car crash. I when know. they drafted Daniel Jones, nobody supported it then. Yeah. What about the then year they six paid bump? Him. No, hold on. Then they paid him, and no one supported it then. It's the world's slowest car crash. It doesn't stop it from being any bit gruesome, because it's painful. I see it. I hear it. It's painful. And then you throw in the fact that they wore their clown uniforms to the game, and it gets even worse. I love the uniforms. Oh, Michael, I love the they're uniforms. not a good look. They're great. And yeah. I just picture your dad, like you wheeled him up to watch this game and then a big pie just splatters him in the First face. First of all, my dad's not in a fucking wheelchair <laughs> no, yet. I know, but just for the visual to me, like you really built this up like you were setting him up for something and he opens it up and it's Jack in the Box so pie in the face. He was so excited. He took you my got a mom. big grin. I can see his big grin and then he you just... He took my mom to the cider mill in the morning. They were having a beautiful day. He was going to settle in for the 1 p.m. kick. I catered a little lunch. We were going to relax. And it was just a shit fuck disaster from go. And again, it's another year. The season is over in week one. Nobody dies faster than the New York Giants. Go look at their September records the last decade. Loser. Dable's going to be the first coach fired, right? I don't care. I no, I, I, I'm, that's maybe. I have never wanted to punch a head coach in the face as much as him. That fucking look on his face, those stupid sunglasses, and this, the idea that this dildo is screaming and yelling and ranting and raving, you're the asshole who's calling these plays. What's your plan on third and four? Daniel Jones like he's Josh Allen? Fuck you. So At least th- Fat Dayball was adorable. Skinny Dayball's just a prick. So the Giants were a loser. Big time, Can dick. I get- can I give you another loser? I don't care. It fucking pissed me off now. I don't even want to do this shit anymore. It made Great I don't review, like subscribe. Seeing, we, we appreciate it, everybody. I don't like seeing my father sad. And all this team does is make him sad. They make me angry. They make him sad. Don't make Big G sad. And he lost in fantasy this week, too. He faced some asshole that had Saquon Barkley, who scored three touchdowns. Just, it, you hate to see it for Big yeah. G. Meanwhile, I outscored you by a fucking country mile. It's not how look. fantasy works, Mike. And no, it isn't. I ran into the top score in the league. Anyway, Antonio Pierce, a loser for me. And I know you like this guy, but you can explain something to me. Go ahead. He gets the Dan Campbell comparison because, you know, he, he rallies the troops. And he, Fourth and one, you're not Dan Campbell punting the ball in the fourth quarter on fourth and one. Not ideal. Uh, um... Not Co- ideal. One of the most cowardly punts, and they track this stuff. It's a stat, cowardly punts. The third most cowardly punt in the last 25 years. Y- you're supposed to be this former player, tough guy, renegade. I'm going to get the guys to buy in, and you're punting the ball fourth quarter, fourth and one. Fair. In a street fight, by the way, you blinked. Mike, they're not going to be a good team, and if he's going to make these decisions, he's not going to be the head coach. I see your Antonio Pierce, and I raise you Deshaun Watson. Okay, you win. No, no, no. No, he was, the, I mean, there's worse. No, no, I'm going I'm to be even bolder. I've seen what I needed to see. You got to play Jameis Winston. You have to move on from Deshaun Watson. Deshaun Watson is just as bad as Daniel Jones in processing, in getting the football out. I understand Conklin and, and Willis still coming back from the injuries. Guys, bottom line, you can't look that way. So imagine being a Cleveland listener. You have Daniel Jones, Mike, but you gave up three first-round picks to and get him. And a quarter him. of a billion dollars. Yeah. Oh. Argue it. Jameis Winston, it gives them a better chance to win. I can't, I can't argue it. The Cleveland it. Browns were so bad yesterday. And by the way, 
This is why last year doesn't translate to this year. You do not get to call yourself the best defensive football anymore. Nope. They got gutted. Gutted by Dak Prescott. So the, I'll, I'll see your Antonio Pierce, and I'd like to raise you with Deshaun Watson. You need to bench him. I agree with you. Can I offer Do we have you? any winners in the NFL? No, no, not yet. I want to give you one more lose. Oh, okay. Positive. Cincinnati Bengals. Do you want to explain to me what I watched? So again, I was watching a lot of red zone and every time they cut to that game, the Patriots had the ball and I riddle long, me this long drip. drip yep. Drip. I'm, I'm like, uh, is Burrow okay? What's going on? I know there's no Higgins. I know Chase is quote limited. What's going on? Uh, dude, Everybody's survivor pool's dead. 41% of ESPN survivor pools died week one because of the Bengals. <laughs> Patriots, eight and a half point dog went outright yep. by six. Look, and Mayo wants them to be a, a hard-nosed, tough-minded, ground-and-pound team. I mean, it worked for a week. I still think they're one of the worst teams in football. That's what I was going to ask you. Like, are they a winner? I mean, what does this mean? They like, can be a winner. They're like a three-win team, and this is one of the three? Maybe. Or are they like a four- or five-win team? Are they a six-win team? Do we sell them short? I'll give you a winner. Okay. And they didn't score an offensive touchdown. Oh, no. No, I'm just kidding. I mean, no, you can, no, you, hold on. Let's do it. You could argue the Bears were winners. No, the Bears and the Steelers. I mean, think about it. The Steelers, Justin Fields might actually just be their quarterback. You go into Atlanta, and, and, and here's the thing. We all talk about Mike Tomlin, and we all complain. And Road it's like dog. The Steeler, or home dog, yeah. The Steeler way works. Yeah. What'd they do? Defense went on the road, shut down Kirk Cousins. Yep. Atlanta looked woefully ill-prepared. See, I, I will tell you, with the NFL stuff, Jim, I think we have to treat the two, first two weeks of the season like preseason. Mm. These games look preseason-ish. There's a lot of slop. Guys don't play together. Yeah, there's, there's a ton of slop. Well, your team's one of them. Well, we can talk about them in a second here. The Bears factually won the game, so you can call them a winner. Yeah, but I, secondarily, the, the big thing we talked about was, and why we didn't bet the game on the pot outside of the under, was the idea that this isn't a typical situation that a number one pick is dropped into. Correct. If, if Caleb Williams was dropped into a typical, awful, three-win team, they lose that game. But because the Bears have, and I don't want to oversell it, but some infrastructure... You're going to get a defensive touchdown. You're going to force some mistakes. You're going to get a special teams touchdown. The Bears were a seven-win team a year ago. He was not dropped into a disaster. And it's because of that that they won the game. So it's a win for the Bears' infrastructure, which is only going to help Caleb Williams along the way. So you could say the Bears won. Okay, talk about your team. Why do you? What, what's with the context here? That, that like Nothing. That, that, that I told listeners you need to be careful with the Rams, that I don't think you're going to walk the dog and bomb them that this team is good, that I have a lot of questions about your secondary, and I got made fun of Friday. And then I watched the game last night. You can't get off the field. You're lucky the Rams had four O-linemen, two hurt before the game, two hurt in game. You had A.J. R. Curry, who was terrible at Michigan State playing left tackle. Mm -hmm. Their good guard, Avila, hurt. You have Jonah Jackson playing center. You couldn't get off the field. Then they bumped him to guard, brought a backup center in. You couldn't really pressure Stafford. You had Puka Nakua die in the second quarter. And I'm sitting here going, are we really in overtime? Now, the, the win is overtime. Get ball. We are going to fucking destroy you. We are going to line up and bully you. It was euphoric because it was exactly what I needed to see. I was watching that game saying what you're saying. Why is this tied? Why are they hanging in? Why are we losing? Right. And, and I Why need, is Cooper Cup catching 15 balls when he's the only human healthy? Like 21 targets. Uh, and, and by the way, but, but, but can, I, can I make one statement? Yes. Now, I will credit the Lions for getting pressure on Stafford. Yeah. But that throw that Stafford missed the cup at the end of the game is one he makes seven or eight out of ten times. You got very fortunate because that first down ends the game. I'm, and I, again, uh, yeah, it's I, part of football. I, 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 you get credit for the pressure. Well, yes. But Jim, Jesus, Mary, and Joseph. But what, I come would, on. what I would tell you is, you know, you did last year doesn't carry over with the Browns. And it was the thing that Dan Campbell hammered home is we got to start over. Yeah. Everybody starts over. The DNA of this football team, when you needed it most in overtime with the ball, yes. seven of eight plays on the ground, David Montgomery, bully ball. It was a drive that said, enough. 
enough. We haven't played well enough. Enough. We're fucking winning this game. It's over. You can't stop it. You're yep. helpless. We're going to run the ball down your throat, and we're going to win. And that's what that's good exactly do. who they are as a team, and you like seeing that DNA reinforced right away in week one. No that's argument. why they're a winner. I get what you're saying, because there's plenty of things not to be happy about. I just was very, I was like, okay. Now, look, I think they have every right to improve defensively. It will take time. Yeah, you got deep, young corners. But but where I was most concerned was up front. I was very concerned up front, Jim. That's a horrific offensive well, and, line. And, and we talked about it today. The idea here is when they're down four offensive linemen, it's not enough to get pressure. You have to finish some of those plays. Correct. And the, 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 the <laughs> argument that we got from people is, well, Stafford was getting the ball out in a hurry. Well, then you have to bring your corners up. You can't give them cushions. Like you got to rely that you're going to get there in two seconds and yeah. and and cover accordingly. If you're going to play off, and you're not going to get home quick enough, yeah, you're going to get diced up. Bottom line: if you can't beat up guys who don't belong in the NFL, yeah. you're not good. Yeah. So I can forgive the secondary because of the new pieces, the rookies. Up front is your strength. Like, got to be better. Yep. Just have to be. All right. So. You want to go through records? Yeah, let's do it. Take us away. What do you got? Okay. Uh, I'd like to focus on the NFL if I could. Well, why? Because you're embarrassed about college? Yeah. Just shoot people straight. They'll like you more. Okay. You don't need to try to pat yourself on the back for one and ignore the other. That's what U of M does. Don't, uh, don't do that. <laughs> all right. Eight and two in the NFL for me. <laughs> Pending Monday night, a chance to no, maybe no, even just... be 10 and two. Yeah. All right. Appreciate it. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Uh, Mike, you went six and four pending Monday night. You're gonna have a winning week. Yeah, I'm, we both start winning in the NFL. Yeah, a pro- operation unders is really what did it. Yeah, I mean, I mean, look, you gotta be out of your friggin' mind to do what we did, but we did it. Under in the Tennessee Chicago game, win. Under in the Atlanta Pittsburgh game, win. Under in Cincinnati New England, win. Under in the Charger Vegas game, win. Buffalo Cardinals just spiraled, missed it. Um, Cleveland Dallas, I. We lost with a minute to go. Yeah, blame Cleveland's well, well, defense. Like, no, 30 seconds to go, you lose. Yeah. Um, but overall, look, Project Under wins. My issue was I took two really bad sides in the NFL. The Giants was a clown car. And as I put here, asterisk, 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 dog shit assholes. Um, it's a good designation. Terrible. And the Cleveland pick was bad from Jump Street. Just a complete whiff. That's what I said. We got to help each other more. I didn't like the Giants, but you... you Walked that lonely road, that lonely road by yourself. You didn't protest a whole lot. I gave you the other side. You didn't listen. You didn't. Wait a minute. Compared to how I openly begged you and called your Georgia Tech pick the trap house when I begged you not Are to you bet against Clemson. Are you asking me to yell at you? Is that what you want me to do? You want me to berate you when I think you have a shit pick? Is that I, how we're going to do business moving I, forward? I, Evan's I, nodding his head. Yes. I feel like, yeah, if okay. you lifted a finger, I might okay. have avoided one so of these. So I'll call you a dipshit and an idiot at least but, three times an episode. Thank you. Well, I'll get the quota in. But the Eagles win. The Seahawks win. Those are good. Um, Jets, I feel good about. So yeah, I'd like to get the seven and four. You're eight and two, possible nine and two. And it's not disrespect when to, I say it. That'll be the best week you have all year. Yeah. Well, to, listen, to go eight and two to, in a 10 game flip, please. So this goes back. I had the Chiefs Thursday. I had the Eagles. We both had the Eagles. Yeah. I had the Chargers. I had the Seahawks. We both had the Seahawks. I had the Lions. That's one you kind of made fun of me for. Oh, I'm sorry. Was that not an overtime game with you laying four is, and a half? Is that not a win? When you check Dude, your FanDuel account, does it, really? does it, does it register You're going to got... try to peacock that? Come I, on. I'm going to count it. Count it. Don't sit there making your own Hollywood star. Come on. My team was up two scores until they let the other guys back in. They were The Lions were the better team. Oh, my they God. Were, you knew they were the better team. Oh, my God. And they proved it in overtime. Okay. Anyway. E- Evan, you're sitting here hearing the same thing I am, right? Okay. Uh, then, the, then the unders. You had all the unders. I think I played all the same ones you did. Um, yeah. Yeah. Plus, we both have the under tonight in Monday Night Football. Okay, college. Uh, college. I went four and four, and I'm pissed off about it because I got absolutely fucked by Michigan with like 30 seconds to go. Hey, assholes, you couldn't score all day. Why are we throwing moon balls now, you dicks? I had the under. They fucked me on that. Now, look, I can live with bad picks. I hate losing that way. The FAU picks sucked. Yep. Sucked. Oklahoma, radioactive. Yep. Here are the three worst old lines I'm seeing in major college football right now. Colorado, SMU, Oklahoma. Um, And Oregon, we need to have a talk because boys, it should have won the football game. Well, the another old line that needs to be better. Yep. Tennessee, Okie State, over 62, NIU getting 28 and a half. It's four and four. Really, really where I'm upset. 
I allowed the line movement to talk me out of Iowa State. That was a winner. Yeah. I allowed the line movement to talk me out of Texas. That was a winner. And the Nebraska thing, I got scared. I got scared when it bumped up and went north of a touchdown. Those are three games that I liked the one side of. And because of the line, if you go back and listen to the episode, I talked myself out of. I feel like those are three wins and I'm sitting here going, how could you pass on those to put dog shit like Oklahoma on your card? That's on me. It's not on anybody else. For the season, you're 12 and seven. Yeah, I'm fine. And we did hit the teaser pleaser. So four and four was a good week for me based on the teaser pleaser at plus 500. It was a five leg teaser and all five legs, you need them to all hit. Texas, half. Okie State, half. NIU, 35 and a half. (laughs) <laughs> All right. Uh, Tennessee laying one. They could have laid 100. And Nebraska, half. So I end up doing just fine. But the base record, God damn it. I feel like I, I, I let a really good week go by being a pussy. Um, you, you got saved by the pleaser. Yeah, the pleaser helped make it uh, not a disaster. Three and six in college. I'm 10 and 12 overall. We'll get it turned we'll, around. We'll go through You'll this. You'll be okay. Because there's clearly some regret here. So as we go through it, Oklahoma State was a winner. NIU was a winner. Tennessee was a winner. Those are the three. The losses. To your credit, Georgia Tech, trappy. Shouldn't have done it. Wish you wouldn't have. Uh, What else? Iowa. I'm not mad at you. They had a two-score lead with that defense in the second half. That one one burns me up. But nothing gets me quite like Utah. I felt like a genius for the oversimplification cap of the century. Team A, good. Team B, bad. And damn it, it was 23-0, good team versus bad team. Then Cam Rising gets pushed into a Gatorade cooler, busts up his hand, he's got it taped up, and Baylor gets just close enough yep. to fuck me on this. You can't cap losing a quarterback. I wouldn't be mad about Utah. You should be very upset at yourself for G-Tech after I did a five-minute presentation. Why not to bet that game? Yeah. You should be mad at yourself for Colorado. That's a disgrace. Okay, we talked about it. I just, I, To me, I wanted to bet Dion as a dog. I certainly would never bet him as a favorite. I liked that the public wasn't on Colorado. But you know what the reality is? Bad football is bad football. Correct. And I should have known better. But here's just like it. I should have known better about App State. This was and, the one. And I even did the angel on the shoulder and the devil on on the shoulder and what you Mike, asked me yeah. michael am i am i betting against clemson on the wrong week and i went um yeah, yes don't do this do you realize i put every game i bet i also do the little notifications so i get the updates on my phone oh boy clemson touchdown clemson touchdown Cle- did the game just start it's 28 nothing 42 points 60 po- yeah to answer my question i bet against clemson on the on the wrong week Okay, but you're three. Jesus Christ. So look, you were down three and a half units on the out. Yeah. Teaser, please, teaser pleaser plus 500. You ended up uh, yeah. just fine. Look. I know, but I'm mad because I also didn't bet Texas. I know. Which you and I both talked about. We should have bet. Look, it I'm going to I'm gonna do what you don't do. I'm just going to keep you positive and I'm going to keep your head up. You're too good at what you do. You're sharp. You got to stop being stubborn. This is two weeks in a row you've been stubborn with me on stuff. And I'm like, Jim, just let shit go. You no, cap but so- these games beautifully, and then you let dog shit upend you. You like you ignore, you ignore the simple. No, yes, kind maybe, of. maybe, kind of. It's it's not, it's not that I'm too stubborn. Sometimes I'm not stubborn enough. I should have been stubborn enough to bet Texas, even though it was public. I should have bet Miami week one, even though there were some, you know, hey, Cam Ward, new site yeah. on the road. I liked Miami. I liked Texas. I if you guys listen to the previews. I'm in on both these teams' win totals. Why didn't I bet them? I needed to be more stubborn in some places, less stubborn in the other. That's why I said we need to work together. But I'm going to keep you positive. On the aggregate, you are still up seven or eight units. And you're horrible in college so far. And that's okay. I I will rally. We will do this together. First two weeks is the hardest. But look, even though I'm... Not happy at all with my NFL. 60%, 10 game rip. If you can clip 60%, you're, you're, you're a pro would kill their Nona. 12 and 7 in college, plus the teaser pleaser. Killing it. Yeah. We're fine. Dude, you rolled out of the rack, and for people who listen to this podcast and are like, I want NFL picks, Jim Costa went 8 and 2. <laughs> like, yeah. you're good. Yeah. So just don't, don't change what you're doing. Keep doing the work, but just situationally, I need you to look at things through a different lens. Yeah. That will that will unlock hot Costa season. Oh. With I a know. couple buttons down. Yes. Hot yes. Costa season. Show off a little of that taco mm. meat for everybody. 
you'll be fine, relax. Okay. But I'm very, I'm pleased two weeks in because we haven't fallen down a flight of stairs. We handed, the, these teasers, you can make fun of them. Guys, I hesitate to say this pod's pretty good at them. You know, last year we had seven or eight of these stupid mm-hmm. things. At plus 400, plus 500 a pop, do the math on those. It covers you. It can help you, but you gotta do them tactically and you find spots and, and look, they're not gonna hit every week. But if you can hit enough of them that they can pad some of your downs and really turn a good week great, that's why you got to do it. Because otherwise, you're not going to make enough betting straight games to really be interested. I mean, I've done this episode, Jim, where it's like, okay, guys, let's say you're a hundred dollar better, and you got here's what you need to what win a thousand dollars or win fifteen hundred bucks, like. When guys go into this football season, they go, I want to make five grand and do something nice for the family. It's like, all right, well, here are the numbers. Here's what it would take. So you have to supplement. That's all. I, it's just, look, and by the way, I like the teasers. So if you don't, don't play them. Hey, that's with all these plays. Play what you want. Don't play what you don't want. Yeah, don't ever blindly follow anyone, don't. including us. And, yeah, don't please, do please don't. Um, but yeah, overall, I think it's good. good first two weeks. Good first start. We're okay. Even though you're two games under in college, whatever, teaser pleaser, you're above water. Eight and two in the pros, it is the ultimate hat tip, even though my hair's a mess. Uh, Mm. Six and four for me in the NFL, 12 and seven in college. Who the fuck's complaining about that? Oh, wait, people, because they think you're supposed to hit 90%. But overall, I feel good about it. I feel like we have a decent handle on it. We're getting data. We're creating our, our kryptonite list. SMU, Oklahoma, Colorado, those three teams kryptonite you cannot bet on them you can only bet against them. but you can bet against them and if you've looked ahead to week three uh, it's gonna be hard to tear me away from colorado state uh, i was already looking at it i the know game is in fort collins it's kind of a light college week in terms of sex appeal which means we will have plenty oh, of fun gambling there's a game i really like early like and i'm like, wondering like, like before saturday early? yeah i'm wondering if it's going to cross the bridge ucf at tcu ucf is a two-point underdog I think they end up favored. That ground and pound against that TCU front? Come on now. And if you've looked, I started building the sheets for next week. NFL, a lot of home dogs. I'll take all of them. A lot of home dogs. <laughs> I'll take all of them. Can't wait to do it again. Yeah. We'll, we'll, be, we'll, we'll have fun with it. But look, savor to flavor eight and two. I, Jim, that'll be the best week you have all year. You do better than that. Well, you should quit. <laughs> It's just an empty chair, a microphone just yeah, kind of hanging. It, it is, and just a bulbous <laughs> Kansas helmet sitting over there. Um, all right, what did we miss out on? Anything? That's everything. You okay. guys can send uh, questions, cash the ticket podcast at gmail.com. Rate, review, subscribe. If you're on Apple Pod, what do we tell people? Downloads on? Yeah, you got to hit the check mark in the top right to turn automatic downloads on so you're actually getting these. They changed that last year. It kind of upended the whole podcast industry. So if you could do that, that would really help us. Um, and then, yeah, other than that, five-star reviews, say whatever the hell you like, and have a good time with it. Don't be a dingling. Nobody wants to wheel a shopping cart around. Don't be a dingling. Have fun with this. Don't be an idiot. And that is Cash the Ticket.